Well, hi, and welcome back to the Cigar Box Guitar Builder. It's Adam Harrison from Birdwood Guitars, and it's been a little while since we uh, we had the podcast. Uh, a lot of things have happened. Um, uh, we've been dealing with uh, COVID here in Australia, especially in New South Wales, for the last four months. Uh, so, I had to make the tough decision over the last four months uh, to close our retail store, which was up at Katoomba, and um, we're now selling out of um, obviously the online store. Uh, going back to doing markets uh, as well, um, but this is the full-time gig. Um, so I've actually opened up a studio uh, just locally here in Hazelbrook in the Blue Mountains in New South Wales, and uh, we're continuing work between home and between um, the, here in the studio. So if anything, one of the things that it's actually given me a chance to do is refocus my attentions back on the podcast. Uh, it's also allowed me a lot more time to spend with family, uh, working on the house, doing a lot of things that I've wanted to do, uh, as well as continue to basically run a cigar box guitar building business. Uh, I also build uh, effects pedals. Uh, we've, we've had a fair bit of success with our handmade effects pedals as well, um, and also electric guitars. So I'm busy. It's been good. It's been okay. Uh, but the most important thing, the thing that you guys are here for, is to listen to some interviews with some players and some builders. Um, I've been playing around with the format of the show. I just found that at the end of the day, what you guys wanted was just simply give us the interviews. Uh, talk to people, find out what people are building. Uh, I'm also going to be talking, hopefully, to more players as well. Players of uh, Roots Instruments and Cigar Box Guitars. Um, but obviously, being the Cigar Watch Guitar Builder, our focus is very much going to be on talking to builders and tips, um, tricks, all that sort of stuff for you. Uh, if you've never built a Cigar Box Guitar before, this is the, uh, this is the podcast for you. Uh, go back and have a listen to um, some of our previous podcasts. Um, especially uh, pop back and have a listen to the interview... Um, that I did just recently with um, Keith, who um, <sighs> Crumley Caster, Keith Crumley uh, from Crumley Caster Guitars, he uh, who passed away um, fairly recently, and um, what a lovely fella he was. Uh, so please go back and have a listen to to that podcast. Um, there's a, there's a lot of information there. Um, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to email me at birdwood.guitars at gmail.com. Um, but today we're going to be interviewing Mick Verko, who's an Australian cigar box guitar builder. He's a little bit of a legend for me because when I first got into building cigar box guitars, he was one of the very first people who I noticed. And um, we'll have a chat with, uh, with Mick today. And... Uh, Thanks for coming back. Thanks for listening. Please tell your friends. Please share uh, the podcast uh, with your friends, your guitar building and cigar box guitar building and playing friends. Uh, and with no further ado, here's the interview. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys. So who have we got here? It's Mick Burko here. All right, Mick. Hey, where are you from, Mick? I'm in Wollongong. Okay. Um, Originally from South Australia, but been here for the last 12 years. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why. One of the reasons I, one of the reasons I know your name so well is because when, when I got into building cigar box guitars initially, uh, which was around, I think, late 2012, um, yeah. for some reason, I don't know why, but you were someone who I used to, I used to look at a lot of posts and your name used to come up a lot, especially I think because of uh the cigar box guitar group yeah yep so are you are you connected with that group at all or i i was in a couple of um groups and i was i was an admin on a couple of groups um uh for a while there but uh i had other things to do and it, it just was a bit too much yeah time spent on there but uh yeah, I used to post a lot. I I used to try and inspire people to to get out and build, um, show them what you could do. I used to build a lot of really weird stuff, yeah. and um, 
you know, just sort of post up some strange things and say, hey, look at this, you know, yeah. it makes music. That's it. <laughs> yeah, just to have a bit of fun. Um, really, that's all it was about. And I reckon uh, it got quite a few people interested. Um, so, yeah, did what it was supposed to do. Yeah. I don't know why. I always used to think you were from Tassie. And up until probably maybe a year ago, and yeah. then I think I, I think I heard you mention or say something about being in Wollongong, and it was one of those funny, you know, one of those weird things. Like you, you automatic, you always think that someone is in a particular box. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you, yeah, you put yeah, them yeah. in a spot. That's you try right. to go there, and I have no idea why, but it really threw me. And I'm thinking, it's in bloody Wollongong. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I thought the same, you know, like I knew where your shop was and everything. And, but then it sort of clicked to me that I could just jump in the car and drive there if I wanted to. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. really just up the road. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's, just, it's The last time I was down in Wollongong was, not that this is connected to Cigar Boss Guitars, but when I first opened the shop, there's this crazy fella named, um, he calls himself Dragon. And he does a lot of eBay stuff, and he's down in Port Kembla. And that was the last time. And he always, he's always selling crazy guitars and acoustics and all this sort of stuff. So I used to get a whole heap of stuff off him from down. No, I used to do the drive down. So that was probably the last time I went down was probably when I opened the shop initially. So it would have been probably 2018. Yeah. So it's been a while since I've been down there. But uh, it's a nice part of the world, man, on the beach. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. It, it's... Um... See, I, I came from South Australia. I was living in uh, on the bottom of the Flurio Peninsula, um, down near the mouth of the Murray River there. Uh, there's a place there called Victor Harbour, um, very, very much like Kiama and the, and the coast down here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, when I came here, I, I sort of felt like I knew the place already. But, uh, yeah. Felt like home. Yeah, it's a nice, nice place here. Um, it's got its perks, you know. Yeah. It's still got a small town feel. Yeah. But, uh, which I like. You know, I, the town I was living in there, um, in South Australia, there was 980 people. Um, so to come here with 300,000 was a bit of a shock. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I felt like that when I, when I, 91, when I came down from, from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland down to Sydney and landed smack dab in the middle of the city. And um, that was that was just an eye-opening experience. And, you know, it's a, for a, a tw you know, 19 or 20-year-old kid, basically a young guy to yeah. come down and... and, and it was bloody fantastic, mate. What are you talking about? Um, all right, so uh, we're talk did you start building guitars down in South Australia? I, I actually started building not really what I'd call guitars, probably closer to diddly bows. Um, yeah, I, uh, I never had much of a musical background apart from uh, listening to mum hum tunes that she didn't know the words to. Um, my brother played trumpet. Um, I never really took on with any instruments uh, until I, I'd worked. I've, I've been a tire fitter for most of my life in heavy industrial equipment, and I've had several injuries in my hands. Um, and I was starting to get arthritis in my fingers, mm. uh, stiffness in my joints. And I was at a physio one time, and a guy said, Why don't you learn to play guitar? And I said, Well, I don't know, you know, I'd, I'd give it a go. And he said, yeah, try it, just have a go because you learn to move all your fingers independently and you actually got to really use your finger. Once you get into it, it will help you out and you will keep your, you know, your manual dexterity. So I got on eBay and brought an acoustic guitar from China for $12. Um, I uh, got on Google, how do you play guitar? Um, went from there and, and yeah, had a bit of a go and, and it was, it was hard. <laughs> Probably having such a, such a crap guitar didn't really help, you know, yeah. uh, since then that, that was, well, I was being sort of late twenties then. Uh, so yeah, that was a fair while ago. And, uh, I, I've since played good quality guitars and the difference, you know, if I'd started with, if I'd gone out and brought myself a Cole Clark or something like that, you know, yeah. or a mate, and I, I probably would have gone right into it and, and played a lot. Yeah. But uh, it was just something to do around a campfire and, and have a bit of fun. But six strings got a bit much for me. I then went and brought a, a tenor banjo with four strings and had a bit of fun with that. Yeah. I actually enjoyed playing with that. I mine one day and I, I saw this thing, a guy was playing a... It was about just one string yeah. on a stick, really. And 
yeah, he got us getting some awesome sounds out of it. And uh, I thought, yeah, that doesn't look too hard, you know. I reckon I could do that. And so I had a go. I built one and then built another one. And, and it was all a bit of fun. Uh, a couple of people asked me, oh, can you build me one? And I, I did. And then uh, I made this weird thing with two strings and an old tuna can and a cricket bat. And uh, it had some pretty good sound. And a bloke that I knew, the pub that I used to go to, he, he was in a uh, band and they played there. And he broke it out one night and started playing it. And that just freaked everyone out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so then I was starting to get people asking me to build them. Um, and I did for a little while. And then I, I stopped and I came over here to Wollongong. Um, and I sort of thought once I, I settled down and I got a job and I I was looking for a hobby, something to do, and I thought I only get back in the building. And so I started, that was about 2010 mm. that I, I sort of started here. Um, and yeah, it just went from there. I used to go to the local markets, Adapto Market here is really huge and there's just mountains of junk that you can yeah. go through and, and everything there. Like, like I always say, everything is a guitar part, but not everything knows it yet. So I had to go sort through the junk and pull out the things and remind them, you're a guitar part and I'm going to take you home and I'm going to build you into something. And so I did. I made oil cans. I made old saucepan guitars, fry pans, bed pans, and all sorts. And, uh, yeah, I put them all online and, and hopefully inspired a few people to build. Um, but it was just for the fun of it, you know. Yeah. I, I got to the point where I didn't enjoy playing them as much. I just enjoyed building them. Mm. And even now... I sort of, I go in my parts box, I pull out a, a cigar box or, or, you know, I make a box or I'll grab something, an old can or a biscuit tin or something, and I look at it and I just sort of think, yeah, well, I reckon it'll need a pickup and, and four strings on this one or three strings or whatever. Um, this one might be gold, that one might be silver. This, you know, it could be just, I might make this one with eye bolts, who knows. <laughs> and I never know what they're going to be till they're finished. Yeah. yeah. And, and f so for me, I, I get a lot of people... Um, and they'll say, oh, I want this. You know, they've been on the on the websites. They've looked at all the guitars. And they thought, I want this bridge and I want this sound hole cover and I want that. And I hate building them. Yeah. I absolutely hate it. Uh, I think it's like having a colour inside the lines when you just want to draw freehand. You know, it, it's just so limiting. Yeah. Um, so now when I get people ask me for stuff, I show them what I've got and I give them a very limited choice so that I funnel them into the direction I want to go. Yeah. Um, you know, I, they say, oh, I want this sound hole. And you say, all right, well, I've got the choice of these two. And either one I'm happy to use, but it's different than what they want, but yeah. they'll pick one of them and I'll use it. Yeah. Um, and I find that's an easier way to do custom builds now. Yeah. Um, but I prefer to just come out in the workshop, sit down and look at something and just think, yeah, that's what this will be. Mm. And I'll start on it. And then halfway through, it'll change. I'll, I'll throw that fretboard away and you can get a different piece of wood or yeah. I'll, I'll suddenly decide it's got four strings instead of three or whatever. It might have a pickup instead of a piezo or, or whatever. Um, yeah, it just changes on the way. And at the end mm. of it, I'll finish it. And I think, right, now I'll play it for a week and then I'll sell it. Yeah. <laughs> Although I don't actually plan to sell them. Every single one I build is for me. Yeah. But after a week or so, I sell them. Yeah, yeah, I'm the <laughs> same. I, I, I ended up getting a ended up getting a um. A, a first of all, I bought a I bought a Daddy Mojo, uh, cigar box guitar because I thought I, I I want a good cigar box guitar and I want to hang on to it and so I bought that. Ended up selling that in the shop. To every single guitar I've owned, I've always ended up going. Oh, I'm going to keep that. I'll keep it. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll go and sell it. And probably a couple of years ago. Um, uh, I, I got involved in a, a, a little, like a swap thing with MGB yeah. over in America, like just, just you know, part of his group, um, Michael Breedlove's group over there. And uh, they said, oh, look, who wants to be involved in this in this guitar swap? And I said, oh, screw it. I'm, yeah, all right, I'll do it. I'll, I'll have a bit of fun. I said, but of course, I was the only Australian who'd actually signed up and done it. And of course, I, I had no problems posting a guitar over to the States. Uh, yeah. But I think when the Americans look at what their postal rates were coming here, it was it's a it's a, a lot more for it some crazy reason. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I ended up, Michael ended up building me one. He said, oh, look, sis, that, let's just make it easy. He said, Adam, I'll, I'll build you one. And it's like, all right. So that's actually my guitar. But I mean, I've he I've heavily modified it. But just so that I won't sell it, I've just covered it in stickers and I've done all sorts of that. Like, yeah. it's it's, unse <laughs> it's completely unsellable, you know? So that's that's mine. So yeah, I, yeah. I get that. Yeah, I, I've actually got a... I'm I've got a baritone ukulele that's like that. Yep. That's my instrument. Um, yeah, and and of course I changed the tuning in it and all yeah. sorts of things. I put a pickup in it, um, but that's that's my thing because it's small and and when I go back to Adelaide and visit family, I can take it with me. Yep. Um, you know, it's it's nice and easy. Um, yeah, so and I can pull that out at a airport or a bus stop mm. and not have a million people come up to me and ask me a million questions about what's that where'd you get that how what, what does it do you know i've made the mistake of taking i built a guitar and i took it with me one time and i was just sitting noodling away at the airport there and uh I reckon I had a crowd of probably 60 people come around all asking questions <laughs> yep. about this bloody guitar. Were they throwing money at you? <laughs> yeah. I've consulted a thousand times yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. She put a hat yeah, out so the front and just done it for tips. I, I did get a few uh, people giving me their phone numbers and oh, I, cool. I did sell a couple of guitars out of it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, just, you know, I... Um, I don't like crowds at the best mm. of times. Mm. <laughs> but I think it's, it's surprising, more. yeah. It's surprising how yeah. uh, a, a simple, humble instrument like that can... Um, can elicit such a response in pe in in people who've never seen them before, and even people that, who aren't that's necessarily what musical. Me. Yeah, I suppose because for so many years now I've been immersed in the whole scene, the the CBG culture, that I go out in public and people see one and they go, "Oh my god, that's amazing! Did you make that?" And I think, "Yeah, haven't you ever seen one of these before?" Yeah. <laughs> I think we get and used now to it. I realise there are people that never have seen them before. Yeah, we get used <laughs> to it. I think we think everyone's seen them or everyone's. Uh, it's that's like right. when I, it's uh, those boxes that you sent me. So uh, just recently, guys, just to let you know, like I, I I I've been really struggling here in in, in Sydney because uh, of lockdown and everything like, like that, to get out and find boxes. And uh, Mick was very kind to, to, to actually offer offer me some boxes. And um, and uh, it's one of those funny things where you do, like we see in Australia, we see punch boxes, not as much, but we see punch boxes, but we see the Romeo and Juliet boxes everywhere. Like they're- Romeo, Yeah, Romeo and Juliet boxes everywhere. Everywhere, but that's, they're that's great, the they're great I've boxes. I've got but, about 80 of those. Yeah, well, I don't know about you, but like, I get a bit sick of them. I get a bit tired of them yeah. because I, I, you're constantly using the same box over and over. But the thing that I have to remind myself all the time is that when someone wants to buy a cigar box guitar, they've never seen that box. They've never seen, like a lot of people. That's right. Aren't, it's all new to them. Yeah. So, <laughs> so to, to me, that that's like, um, you know, that, that's just a bread and butter box. Those yeah. ones, they're just a basic, nothing fancy about them. Yeah. You know, and, uh, I've even got that way now. I feel that way a bit about Padron boxes and, and just basic wooden boxes. Yeah. They're just bread and butter box. Yeah. Yeah. And I've even gone to the extremes of doing my own labels now. And, and um, you know, I, I make my own boxes. Mm. Um, I brought a heap of labels from Kenny Lee Burgess. He, he did these labels. He printed up Roaring Lion and it's got a... a it's got one Bible verse or something about a roaring lion and, you know, yeah. um, and a picture of the devil playing a guitar. On it. <laughs> and I brought a heap of those. So I now make boxes. I put those on it. Yeah. Okay, it's called. And it's... Um, Sorry, you dropped... Say that again, mate. You just you dropped out for a second. Uh, the, uh, I, I buy the... It's called washi tape. You get it from scrapbooking places and stuff. It's, it's a very similar to the trim that's found around the edge of a cigar box guitar. Yeah, you know, or a cigar box. I use that, and I put that on the edge. Uh, uh, you know, and it looks like a cigar box. Mm. Anyone who's never seen one would look at it and go, "Oh, that's a cigar box." Yeah. Um, All you got to do is yeah, put I've one actually, cigar in it overnight for a while. That's it. Then it's a cigar box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, so I've yeah, got a I, question I've, for I've you. Boxes. So I've got a question for you. But talking to you about this, and now I, uh, guys, if if you're not a member of the Cigar Box Guitar Builder Group. Go and join the group, and then type in Mick's name in the uh, in the search search bar, and you can go through. and I've only just re I did this today because I thought I want to go through and I want to look at some of your most recent builds. I thought I wonder if I can. I never realised I could do this. You'd go into a group, pick someone's name, yeah. and it'll just bring their posts up, which was just really posts, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I sometimes look at my own because I, I can't remember builds that I did, yeah. or if a customer asks me about you know, guitars, and yeah. I think, oh, here's a good way to get some photos. Yeah. I'll just go in the group, type a name in and pull up all the photos. Yeah. And, 
yeah, it's um, it's interesting when you go back and you look and you think, geez, did I really build that many? Yeah. <laughs> you know, or did I really build that thing? You know, well, some of them are pretty way out. Well, keeping keeping in mind what you've been talking about, the type of builds that you've been doing, I, I, I probably this is something that's kind of been working through my mind lately, and I'm seeing a lot of posts come up, especially from the US especially from the US and, and and please everybody I'm not having a dig at anyone but this is it's it's a podcast and we're asking questions we're trying to get ideas and thoughts and sharing opinions and things like that and one of the things that I that over the last few years that I've been seeing especially Shane Spiel especially uh, CB Giddy and you know and obviously MGB has been doing the same thing all of the pre-made kits that get the cigar box guitar kits uh, I might be a contentious question to ask, but how do, I mean, how do you feel about those types of those types of things going going out? Um, yeah, I think it's a good entry. I think it's good for someone, you know, these people that go, "Wow, you know, that's an amazing thing. I'd love to have one." And you can say, "Well, here you can build your own." That way, you fully understand the instrument, and you know, once you learn to play it, you you, you know it inside out. You might go from there and build. You know, and then put your own ideas in it. Um, I would rather see kits that people can put together than than uh, them putting the kits together and saying, "Oh, here's a cheap entry level guitar." Um, you know, like a while back, there was those Chinese made things that yep. would come onto the market. Uh, you know, and everyone grabbed one because it was a novelty thing. Um, and now you see them on marketplace every day for ten bucks, and, yep. and no one wants them anymore. And you know what? And, uh, I love them. I absolutely love them. I think they were the best thing to happen to cigar box guitar building in years. I, I think they were because they uh, they brought it to mainstream. Mm. That, that it probably increased your customer base by showing other people that you know here, hey, look, this is what you do. It's a weird looking guitar and it's great fun. You know, and, and there's limitations. I, I built quite a few. <laughs> but it's funny you were saying about those the the Romeo boxes being so common. Um, I built a whole heap. I went, I went down to the big green shed down to Hammer Barn, you know, Bunnings, and, yep. and brought a whole heap of, uh, you know, forty by nineteen Tassie oak. I brought a whole heap of that, cut them up in a nex, and because like, I went to, uh, I went to a place at, um, oh, I can't remember, it was up near Sydney. I went to this joint, and they had all these boxes for sale, mm. and a lot of them had writing on them, you know, display not for display or whatever, yeah, because you know, of the Australian laws. Uh, but there was a whole heap of them that were clean boxes. So I, I brought a whole heap and I brought them home and they were all the same, all those Romeo boxes. Uh, and I made 10 of these acoustic, like, um, ukulele things that were just the most basic. I put the, the, the tuners down at the box end yep. and just used a piece of aluminium angle for a headstock. That, yes. And I ran the strings from the head down to the tail uh, and put a longer... A longer piece of wood on them after the tuner, so you could stick them in the sand. So you go down the beach, stick it in the sand, and you got the thing there. And, and uh, those boxes actually do make a decent acoustic sound. They do. They need a little. They need a little bracing out, a little bit of bracing out. But otherwise, they sound great. They do. They need a bit of bracing to, to stop that droney noise. But uh, they they do put out a reasonable sound. Mm. And uh, I made all these acoustic ones, and they sold like hotcakes. Yeah. That, that was crazy. So. After a while, some of the people, I, I started getting these calls, people saying, oh, you know, you build me one of these. And I'm thinking, who the hell are you? And so I brought one, of, put this thing off here that's, you know, this weird looking guitar thing. And I go, oh, okay, you brought one of those, <laughs> you know, the, the beach ukulele. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and then they've, they've gone from there. They want to build a proper guitar. They want, you know, a, and when I say a proper guitar, I mean a nice looking cigar box. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Because I tell you, that's one thing that really, gets on my nerves yeah. when people describe a store-bought, you know, rounded curved body guitar as a proper guitar. Yeah. Yeah. When they're talking about CBGs, that yeah. really gets up my nose. <laughs> and because once upon a time, there was a guy in a back shed who got some bits of wood and bent them over some steam and curved them and stuck them together and made this boxy looking thing. And, you know, people would have said, what the hell is that weird looking thing? That, yeah. That's not a cello or a violin. And, uh, he called it a guitar, and there you go. It's now a, we're doing the same with cigar boxes. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's surprising, uh, it's a yeah. Real, they're a real thing, you know, and this is what really shits me um, <laughs> because they, uh, they're they a real instrument. Yep. I, I've got people that play them on stage, you know, the guys that 
and you know yourself there's heaps of people that play these things up on mm. and gig with them and uh, yeah it's just crazy yeah we've got a local band down here uh 1920 and uh, oh yeah well, yeah the fan john right john william and uh and and uh, yeah, yeah and, and, and the guys came, and came the lead, lead yep. singer of the group yep. I, I built one for him ages ago uh just a license plate one he picked a plate and he wanted a flashy box and and whatever and i built one for him and and he played it on stage, and that was probably the best advertisement I ever yeah. had for for guitars. Yeah. But um, and like that, he could play the leg of a chair. That yeah. guy, he was just brilliant. And, well, we used uh, to see the guys up at the shop. They'd pop in, and and John actually, um, uh, the the double bass player, John actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, kind of went in with me. We actually ended up. We designed a, a an effects pedal together and kind of built that up. And he's he's got one of my uh, every now and again. I think he's got one of my um, distortion or fuzz pedals on his board. And they're just such a nice yeah. group of guys, man. They're just th- so nice. They really you know? are, aren't they? Oh, yeah. just super. Yeah, Absolutely. Just wish them all the best. And, uh, yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed going to their shows and and you know him playing the, the things. I set up one one of his shows. I set up a bit of a display. With a few guitars, I sold a few, few there, and that led to other, other sales, and uh, which led to the guy from the local blues club asked me to come to their Blues Day show and do a, a show there with them and uh, set up, and I sold a few there. Yeah. And uh, but I sort of, um, yeah, we, we had a few dramas in our personal life, and, mm. and uh, uh, that sort of, we had a um, back in when was that two thousand fourteen mm. had. Um, lost a son. Mm. He uh, he had a um, chromosome problem, and uh, yeah, we lost him. And I would sort of lost the will to do anything yeah. for a while there. Um, and I I didn't come out in the shed. I locked up my workshop, and I didn't come out here for at least a year. Mm. I didn't even open the door. Mm. And uh, yeah, and when I did come back, I pulled the whole place down and rebuilt it and started again. Fresh and start. Mm. Yeah, I had. I had a guitar I was actually building for my son on the bench um, and it sat there for a year unfinished Mm. Um, and I came out and I finished that one and I gave that to um, a fellow called Nick Reinberger from the ABC radio. Okay. Uh, He he plays a bit of music down this way. He puts on a few shows and things. Yeah. And uh, he's a bit of a a fan of odd instruments (laughs) and... um, yeah, I, I gave that to him. He loved it. <laughs> and yeah. uh, that sort of got me thinking, all right, well, I'm, maybe I'll get back into it. And I did. Mm. And, I, and I, yeah, I've really so, enjoyed it since. So how many guitars do you reckon you've, you've made all up? <sighs> It'd be hard to say. It's, if not thousands. Yeah. I've made so many of these things. And, like, I made, at one stage there, I, I was making pretty much two or three every weekend yeah you know i'd come home from work and i'd come out in the shed and i'd start and i'd get it planned and i'd cut you know a whole heap of necks and things and, and bits of wood and and then i'd come out on the weekend and i'd just bash it out and mm. and the missus would come out it'd be 10 o'clock at night she'd say you gotta shut up you know the neighbors <laughs> will complain you've got <laughs> machines going and whatever um do you do yeah, a lot of fretted I, or fretless stuff mostly fretted um mainly i find fretted ones easier to sell yeah um because I think fretless ones you're really going to sell to people that can play. Mm. So you, <clears throat> I think the the people that buy these things are usually people that don't know how to play an instrument, and they sort of see them, and it's a novelty thing that they want to learn to play. And, uh, and, <laughs> and so they they like the frets on them. Yep. Um, I've had a few people that want to buy them just for slide, yeah. you know, and, and play them just as a slide guitar. Um, oh, I did sell quite a few fretless ones um, to, to actual musicians. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, other than that, mostly fretted. I, yeah, I don't mind doing the fretted ones. It's, yeah. uh, do you fret your own necks? Or? It depends. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, I usually just buy the, the fret wire in bulk. Yeah. Um, I get online and just look around and find out who's got a good deal on, on the day and, and buy you know, a couple of pounds of fret wire. Yeah. Um, and I try and I try and buy the same size, so I don't have to muck around with me saw yeah. with what with fret slots. <laughs> um, I made that mistake a couple of times. You know, yeah. you buy a different. Oh, that's cheap. I buy all that fret wire, and you get it here, and and it's yeah, you're either too skinny for your saw blade or whatever, and yeah. so you got to go and buy another saw then. Well, I, I did that. 
when I, when I first started doing frets, I remember um, I, I really struggled to try and find a saw that would do the job. And someone had said to me, I'll oh, go and get yourself one of those Japanese, so get a Japanese saw. And I could bought one of those and it was horrible. So it was so thin. It was so incredibly thin. So I remember remember yeah, hammering mate. hammering and hammering yeah. and the frets would just keep bouncing out and the heart and the longer i was hammering the harder i was hammering so by the time i ended up smashing the neck in half i just got so furious so yeah fret, fret, fret wire and yeah, fret i had a few moments like that yeah. <laughs> there was a, a few picks that ended up down in the backyard. Yeah, there was. Yeah, that started my six month stint of only doing fretless stuff. So <laughs> that was that was many years ago. But I do remember. I, I can laugh at it now. But I remember when it happened. I was just like, "Screw it! That's it! I'm not doing fretted stuff. I'm not going to do it anymore." I'm, you know, because when I first did, well, I, think... I, I brought a, a saw through a, a you know a, a luthier supply place, and it was meant to be. This is the bee's knees. This saw. Yeah. Buy this. And I brought it and, yeah, cut the fret slot and the fret wire fell out of it. And uh, I thought, you're joking. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I measured it. I got the micrometer out. I measured it. And uh, in the end, I laid it on the bench and I bashed it with a hammer and smashed all the teeth flat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, it, then it worked. <laughs> yeah, so, it hard, it worked. so, question for you. We've just been to... The latest post that you put on the Cigar Boss Guitar Builder group was of a paint tin resonator. Oh, yeah. That so one, tell yeah. us a story about that. <coughs> well, I had a guy I wanted, um, same thing. He, he, his girlfriend sent me a message, said, oh, you know, I've seen you sell these things on, on, uh, marketplace. I had a, I've sold quite a few on there. Yeah. She said, oh, I see you sell these things. My boyfriend wants one. He's seen a few. This is what he wants. Um, and she rattled off all this description you know he wants this he wants that he wants he wants a resonator but he wants really good art on the box yeah. and i thought well they don't go together you're going to cut a big hole in it yeah. so i uh i showed her I, I took pictures of i lined up you know bits and pieces i had and i sent it to her and showed her pictures of it and, and she said yeah i like this 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 you know i like that type of headstock i like that type of thing and i had a picture of a i didn't have a resonator at the time but I had a picture of one that I built and I'd used an actual spoke protector off a push bike uh, as the cover. And she liked that. Yeah. She said, oh, I want to, uh, you know, a cover thing, sort of chrome like that, shiny. And when I went to put it on the box that she picked, it was too wide. Yeah. And I thought, oh, what am I going to do here? <laughs> so the box itself was too thin um, that I, I couldn't put a dog bowl in it. So I cut a hole and I used a lid off a paint tin and put put that on the on the top as the actual resonator cone i thought well that'll do that's fine but now i need a cover and this other thing was too wide so what i did i got the went inside and got the can opener cut the bottom off the paint tin <laughs> and i cut a hole in the middle of it with a hole saw and then i got a piece of wood like a um, piece of pine about probably three quarter inch thick yeah and i cut it into a circle the size i wanted with the band saw just cut a circle out of it and then I cut another piece out of six mil ply, a smaller circle, and put that on top, glued it on top, and then I put the paint, bashed it with the hammer. Until it just hit, shape. So you just put it on top of the on top of the timber and just hammered it around. I just put it on top of the wooden sort of yeah, I made like a wooden sort of form to put it over, and I just started building it with a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember um, around and around, around it until I got it close. Yeah. I remember Justin Johnson did a, a, a video. I think he was here in Australia. I'm sure he was here in Australia, and he he, he did a um, he did a video about actually how to how to do it, um, how to actually do use paint tin lids and things like that, and actually smash them out because it actually changes the it changes the tone instead of just using a flat paint tin. It does something, doesn't it? Yeah, you can uh, you can change the shape of them. Um, I, I I did a couple with um, paint tin lids and coffee tin lids also you know your big nest cafe coffee yes. instant coffee tins the lids on those and i i had a small wood lathe just a cheap you know beginner's wood lathe and i made a, a shape of a cone and a piece of wood and then i clamped the the actual um paint tin lid onto the or the coffee tin lid this was onto that piece of wood and spun it and as i spun it i just used a, a big it was actually a cricket stump that i used yeah and i leaned into it and just sort of yeah spun it out into the shape of that wooden form that i'd made and made a cone 
Yeah, and oh, I tried wow. that, and that sounded bloody good. I was pretty happy with that, but I tell you, it was a lot of work to get it. You had to put a lot of effort into yeah. it to stretch it into that shape. There's um, something really had... cool about there's something really cool about a rustic cigar box guitar. Do you know what I mean? Like it's because I, I found myself over the last with with me and with my business and what I you know because obviously for me this the cigar box guitar thing is it's my livelihood. So it's, this is actually a proper job for me as well. Like when I say proper yeah. job, it's yeah. it's my it's my job. It's how I feed the kids and that's it so i i've found myself um over the last few years especially with having the shop also for simplicity to going for pre-made boxes and they're all quite the same size applying artwork and doing all that type of thing which has really really worked but um and it's worked rather well but over the last few probably the last few months especially since we closed the shop uh in june um, I'm finding myself, that's why I've contacted you about the cigar boxes, because I'm actually finding myself swinging back to uh, not only doing the, the pre-made boxes, which are great, which are, yeah. and I love, that they sound fantastic and they're, not, they're bigger than most normal cigar boxes as well. Yeah. But there's something uh, very something very cool about an old cigar box and in fact one yes. of the ones that i got off you it was one of the ones that you were talking about that was in the water it had black mold on it yeah. and yeah, i took yeah. what i ended up doing was i ended up taking uh, and i'm working on it now i've taken the lid off it and i flipped the lid as a punch and i actually prefer yeah, the artwork yeah. from the underside of the punch lids yeah, I, was able I, I do to, on a lot of boxes yeah. actually <laughs> and i was able to save the trim around the top so what i've actually done is sanded off all the artwork and replaced one of the panels with another punch side panel which had from a box which was broken now replaced yeah. fixed that replaced that so i've actually sanded it off and it's completely like the whole rest of the box is naked and all of a sudden you start you know when you when you're building these cigar boxes, and this is what i'm saying to people like if, if you if you've worked on kits before and you've gone and gotten kits and and that's this again is it, it's it's certainly not not a i'm not you know turning my nose up at kit guitars and things because it's because there's a place for them there certainly are and you can use yeah, there is a place and they come them. I, I think and they they're are, naked because uh, you can do anything with them yeah but also you can do whatever you want with them you can be artistic with them too so i'm not having a go at them but there's something very uh, very very cool about just getting a box and a, a piece of you know a piece of oak or you know if you're in the states i know uh, what is it um uh or yeah, like poplar that. and something like that. Just any, just a piece of timber, and looking at it, looking at a, a box, and looking at a piece of timber, and saying, "What have I got?" And using like you know, as you were saying, your paint tins for resonators. That there's something really magical about oh, Korea, and it takes I, longer. I still, <laughs> I still like doing eye bolts. Yeah, for tuners. I still like yeah. doing that. Eye bolts. I've made them out of eye bolts. Um, you know. Hose clamps, yep. I've made them out of hose clamps, yep. uh, all sorts of things. You, I don't you often use eye bolts, but I did a, um, I, I got 10, I actually did buy, I bought over, on eBay over the last last couple of months, I bought 10 Macanudo boxes, brand new, the brand new, you know the ones that Shane Spiel, he was building his guitars, the fretless ones, and yeah. he put, and I went, oh, I can, I could do something like that. I could do something like that, you know, and so I actually went and built one, and man, I had fun, no fretboard, just, just, you know, just burnt the fret markers on piezo. Yeah. But I've actually stopped using piezos. I, I, and yeah, this is the yeah. first. I, everything I'm doing from now on, I'm just going to put electric guitar pickups in it. It's as simple as that. I That's think it. a lot of people prefer it. You know, yeah. and and I I think um, people don't get the they just don't get the screech sound. Mm. They they. Uh, yeah, they want they want to sound like Eddie Van Halen, you yeah. know. They, well, they want to be a rock star. You know, it's, that's what I think. I had a chat with a customer yesterday. So the guy, this guy that I've been chatting with him back and forwards, and 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 you know, he's bought a pedal from me, and he he, he bought one of our. He, he contacted me and said, "Look, I've got a couple of your piezo guitars. I've got a fretless one. I've got a fretted one. I want something else. What can I get?" So I, I had a chat with him. He bought one of my Lightning Boy guitars, which is one of our, you know, with bang pop or that sort of thing, right? fretted electric guitar pickups the whole kind of trip and he said and then he said to me he said um said something really interesting which was he said the first one i've got which is the fretless one he said the fretted one sounds a lot brighter and i the way i place my pickups i get a very i get a very very strong signal without the screech and it's but it took years and years and years and years but you still there's still a particular way to play a, 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 a fretless instrument and to me not fretless a piezo instrument for me and i'm curious as to what you, what you think about this it's 
it's it's a percussive thing. It's it's almost rhythmical. Yeah. It's 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 that very very much that um, if I can use that to me, I, I I'm thinking like way back when I'm thinking about you know those those really African roots where the instrument orig instruments originally came from. And for me, a cigar box guitar with a piezo, especially fretless. It's not going to resonate and sing and 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 sustain. It's more of a boom, cha, boom, no. cha. like it's a real r thing to go with your voice. It is. It's yeah. It really is. It's um. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I, that's what I like about them. I like yeah. you can tap on it, you can slap it. Yep. You, you know, you, you can. You don't even have to pluck strings. You can just thump them with your fingers. That's and, it. Dirty, you know, you, nasty, unruly, like grungy it is um you Crying know rhythm. That's yeah, it's it. It, but it, it is it's it's yeah. and i and I'm, you know obviously I'm, I'm sitting here you know a half greek white guy you know but I'm, and i mean that with respect <laughs> the total respect and I, I i wouldn't you know i wouldn't know rhythm if it hit me on the head let's be honest I, my rhythm's awful <laughs> but to me that's the kind of thing that i'm thinking i'm, I'm not thinking i'm not going to play eddie van halen or I'm not even really going to play like Chicago blues stuff on a, on a fretless piezo cigar box guitar. I'm going to be thinking Robert Johnson. I'm going to be thinking, uh, you know, Blind Lemon. I'm going to be thinking. I'm just going to be thinking all of those exactly. those hill country blues, those real acoustic blues stuff. And I'm just going to try and, in my own way, try and get that feeling. But that's yeah. what it is because the. That type of a guitar is an accompaniment. The voice yeah. is the instrument. The guitar is an accompaniment. Yeah. So it's got to be all the instruments. It's got to be the string section. It's got to be the, the percussion. It's got to mm -hmm. be everything. So you can get away with that. But when you when you put electric pickups and all the electric gear in it, it's uh, yeah. Then it becomes the star of the show. Yeah. And and you know. It's a bit of a cop out in a way. It's a, as a as a yeah. retailer of cigar box guitars. In 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 a way, it's kind of the. And because I was thinking about this yesterday, and, and and it's been a difficult decision to stop using piezos. Because personally, I utterly love them. I love them. I really, really love playing with them. The struggle that you have sometimes with them, and oh, yeah, to me, yeah. and you can't put fuzz with them, right? It's really difficult for me <laughs> to sell one of my pedals, my fuzz pedals, with with uh, with the piezo pickup because they don't like each other too much. Boost is great. Well, your nice boost pickup, yeah. boost pedal with a piezo pickup, fantastic. <laughs> Fuzz with a piezo, sometimes it's just like, oh, some work, some not so good, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and there's no rhyme or reason to what will work. No. But it's just, well, that one worked, and this one, I thought I'd built identical, but it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so what yeah. do you, okay, so... We're obviously going through this, going through this thing with 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 COVID and all that sort of stuff at the moment. We've got lockdown. We're opened up. We're locking down again. We're opening up. We're all over the place. Um, <laughs> to keep it positive, to finish off, what if we? Uh, what would be your top tip for builders? What would be for new builders? What's your top tip? Um. It's not a stupid idea unless it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, like, have a go. Have a, you, I, I do it myself. I, I think, what if I did this, use that type of wood? What if I made it that shape? Or, you know, what if I joined the neck to the box like this? And have a go. And, and you know, you never know. You might string it up and the whole thing flies to pieces. <laughs> or it might sound brilliant. You just don't know, you know. And the same with um, different different uh, materials, a, a can, a, a paint tin, whatever. Just have a go. Yep. Don't don't be scared of having it. And, and the same with, one thing that really annoys me is the number of times I've seen a group of people that say, oh, I'm not ready to try frets yet. So why not? Yeah. What, what is there a, a point of time on your watch that says, right, you're ready now, you know, start cutting slots in it. You're ready have when you're ready. You're, you're just, ready. Just, just pick it up and do it. You know what? I, I did one. Uh, one of the first ones I did, I cut all the slots. I, I went and got all the proper measuring devices and checked it and double checked it and cut all the slots. Went and put fret wire in. It wouldn't fit. Uh, I cut the slots too big. So just super glued them into the slots that I'd made. Yep. And it worked brilliant. You know, my, someone brought that guitar. My son, my son, this is when he was probably about nine. He's nearly 15 now. And uh, he he built he built a cigar box guitar he wanted to come down with me he, he wanted to be he's built he's built two or three like many years and years ago he's now into computer games and all that sort of stuff now so much but yeah. uh, which is which is normal you know which is and um yeah. but he built one and uh 
he went, no, I said, do you want to do it fretless? He said, no, no, I want to put frets on. So I said, all right, well, I, yeah. I got him some bamboo and he cut up the bamboo. And, and I said, do you want me to show you where to put it? It was a little short scale thing, you know. He said, no. He said, no, yeah, I just yeah. want to put them on. And you know what? The first four frets are almost spot on. <laughs> <laughs> like, I looked at it and went, that's real. That looks really close. And of course, when we played it for the, and it had a little electric guitar pickup on it, one of the one of the Aldi uh, little, you know, the little nine dollar Aldi ones, yeah, which yeah. are just dirty and nasty. <laughs> and you know what? It's one of the best sounding little cigar box guitars I've ever heard. It is so good. It is so powerful and good and strong. And it's like he did such a great job on it. You know, it's it's just crazy. So yeah, just get in there and, and do frets, people. It doesn't hurt. It's not difficult. It's you can do it. Yeah, and if you stuff it up, it doesn't. That's it. Just, just have a go, and, and don't, you know, don't worry if it's not right. I, I've done a few. Even now, oh, sometimes you re, when I go to lay out the frets on it, and you look at it, and it's you're looking at it in millimeters, and I'll say, you know, ninety three point five seven yep. millimeters. And you just go, yeah, ninety five is close. You just bang a line in there, cut it, bang it on. <laughs> Who cares if it's not Stick. perfect? Because get yourself a ruler. I got myself a meter ruler. I got a meter ruler or an almost meter ruler. Blue tape. I had a yep. I had a CB Giddy chart size chart stuck it on top, <laughs> marking pen. That's it. That's yep. it. And you know what? It intonates perfectly. It's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can you can muck around moving the bridges around. Yeah. Most of mine have got a floating bridge on them. You can move it around a bit and, and get it closer. Yep. But you know, you go and put a different tension strings on it, different string heights, whatever, and it changes again. Yep. So as long as it's close, you know. That's it. It's I, a cigar. I, I, Shane Spiel said, mate, if it rattles there. and pops and does stra and has strange noises, it's a cigar box guitar. It's going to do it. That's what makes yeah. it raw. That's yeah. what makes it real. Yeah. You yeah. know, when it's the difference between listening to uh, a recorded album that's been massaged within an inch of its life mm. and overproduced and then going and seeing them live at a show. Yep. You know, yep. and... To, to me, that guy on that album, he's not a musician. Yeah. He, he's not a musician's arsehole. He, he's not a musician in any way. But the guy that's on the stage, that's yeah. just belting it out, and he's making mistakes, he's forgetting words, he's hitting the wrong note, he's a musician. He's yeah. a fun. He's, he's entertaining. That's it. And I think if it's you It's the bum notes that make it, it sometimes, isn't it? You know, we, we, my wife and I were driving exactly. in the car today, and we heard Mark Seymour, listening to Mark Seymour, and he was just on, just on the radio, and he was doing, um, uh, I can't remember the song, but man, you could tell he'd been, a, it must have been the end of the tour. His voice was gruff. His voice was really, really like that real, rough, you know. He's, yeah. But you know what? Yeah. He hit every single note. He hit yeah. every single note. And you knew it was live. You knew it was, and it was sounded real. It just sounded so great. It, like it got a little chill going up your spine when he hit that note. Yeah, Tears of Joy. Yeah, I think it was Tears of Joy, you know. Yeah. And just, wow, it was just so cool to see, you know. And he goes, there was nothing on it. It was just an acoustic guitar, just him. I think someone behind him on an, on an electric or something like that for a bit of ambience in there. And it was just his, his voice, and that was it. And it was so good. Last question for the day, man. Secret weapon. Yep. What's your secret weapon? Oh, I, don't, I don't know if I have a secret weapon, really. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be hard to say. Um, I don't know. I think probably secret weapon is... Uh, been able to talk people into buying these things. Yeah, don't hurt, mate. <laughs> that, that's, don't hurt. That's a good one, mate. Gift of the I, gap. I, I advertise a lot on Marketplace. Yep. I, I do. I try and do you know one every couple of weeks and and put on Marketplace. Yep. Um, and I let them sell themselves. I just list what's on them. Why I put that on there? Yep. You know, it's got this type of wood because I like the colour. You know, it's got this because it. it looks <laughs> nice. Whatever. And and let it so then the people will come here and they'll mm. talk to me about it and I can get one that sounds rough as guts and, yeah. and they'll buy it yeah. and they'll love it yeah. and I suppose that's that's something is to be able to connect to mm. people to be a, to sell them to them. Do you have a um, website? No, I don't. No. I I a while back I looked into doing it all and and getting into it and then I thought, you know what, I'm doing this for me really, yeah. and if I sell them, that's great. Um, but at the time, I was more interested in inspiring people to build yep. uh, and, and have a go because I've always been like that. Have a go, you know. I've got TVs in my room that are broken and I'll, I'll pull it to pieces and I'll find, oh, that's burnt. I'll change that and it works. Yep. And, you know, I've got a working TV, computers, or anything like that. And I've got amps here all in pieces. I've people throwing them out and I've picked them up on the side of the road and fixed them. And, and uh, 
I just think you start off, you've got something that's broken, doesn't work, or it's no good, or it's a pile of pieces, and you have a go, the worst that can possibly happen is you've still got a pile of pieces or a broken thing. That's it. That's the worst that can happen. A few capacitors to stick in. You learned something (laughs) new and you made something work. That's that's the same with these things. That's why I say just get out and have a go, build it, do it. Don't talk about it, think about it, and don't don't over-research it, don't overthink the whole thing. Just grab your stick in your box and bang it together and put some strings on it to have some fun. Mate, what a great Uh, way to end the episode, mate. Absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you so much, mate. I really appreciate you spending time with us this afternoon. Uh, It's been really cool. It's been good. It's been a good chat. It's been good to finally meet you too. You know, we talk back and forth on on, on Facebook and stuff. (laughs) Oh, do you have an Instagram page? I don't. I don't have any of that sort of stuff. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I, about the only thing I've got is uh, an email you could contact me on. Um, and yeah, on Facebook and, uh, and the groups. Facebook through the groups, yeah. Yep. I'm on there. You know, people catch me there. Yep. Um, so I'm, I'm in quite a few of the different cigar box groups. and Although I have I have uh, shaved a few off because a lot of it gets repetitive. Yeah. Uh, I find it's, a lot of it's, you know, the same guys that you follow uh, are in the groups. Yeah. Um, I don't mind when there are people that inspire me. Yeah. You know, there's, there's guys that still, right from the day one, like guys like Randy Bretz. Yeah. Um, my God, that man's a genius. <laughs> Some of the stuff that he builds and, you know, a stick on a tree that he just pulled out of his garden yeah. and the next thing it's a yeah. guitar. Do you remember? That inspires me. I have, I've have got to ask because it's... It, when I got back in contact with you and started seeing, started seeing your name popping up again, yeah, uh, probably about six, six or seven months ago. You know, it just you yeah. go through. It, I was using Instagram pretty much only. I wasn't using Facebook much at all through my own yeah, profile, yeah. just the just the page. Um, I'm just trying to remember his name. He, he used to do a lot of hubcap uh, electric style guitars. He was up in Noosa, and oh yeah, I, I do vaguely remember that. Um, I'm just trying to remember. Guy I know brought one from him, uh, an old FJ Holden hubcap. Made in a guitar. I can't remember the guy's name. Okay. And I haven't seen but, any uh, posts from him in years. It just—it's one of those things that you kind of lose touch with people. And yeah, um, you do. and uh, yeah, I just—it's just, so. If anyone's listening and you know who he is, give me a buzz and, and and let me know because I just I haven't seen him do anything. And he was doing the rocker covers. He was doing yeah, rocker cover. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he did do a couple of those. I, I remember uh, seeing. Just cannot remember his name. It says I'm a horrible, <laughs> horrible human being. Anyway, this is Adam. Um, I've been chatting to Mick Verko uh, for the Cigar Box Guitar Builder. Go and check, check Mick Verko's work out at our group, which is the Cigar Box Guitar Builder uh, group, which we have gone back to being. I know there's been some name changes over the last couple of weeks and just trying to get my shit together. So just get over it. Okay. So it's gone back to being the Cigar Box Guitar Builder because that's what we are, you know. Yeah. So, but we're going to be chatting with some people. Um, uh, over the next few months, hopefully some players as well. So it'd be nice to try and get some player uh, player feedback, some players' ideas of what they like in, in, in guitars. So, you know, I'm I'm, thinking, I'm gonna try and maybe see if we can talk to Fiona Boys uh, at some stage, if I can lock it down for an interview at some stage, but I, I might need to get back into this a little bit more and get some get some interviews under my belt before I have, I'm <laughs> a little nervous about giving her, get, trying to get in contact with her. But if anyone knows her, just drop our name, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Mick, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for spending yeah, time yeah, with us today. Yeah, thanks, mate. It's been really good. And uh, good I'll, uh, right I'll right. let you get back to the get back to building or get back to the kids. It is Sunday afternoon, so go and enjoy yourself, mate. The kids can look after themselves for a while. I'm yeah. in the workshop. Oh, he's now. in the workshop, guys. <laughs> They've lost him for the night. They've lost him for the night. <laughs> I'm a bad man. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, we'll finish off. I'll, uh, I'll I'll do a sign off and I'll just try and get this bloody thing working here. That's it. All right. Look, I'm tapping on it. It's going to be this big thud on the phone because I'm recording. I'm tapping on it. So thud, thud. All right. All the best, mate. Take care. Thank you so much. I'll do the sign-off here, but I'll catch up with you in the funny pages soon. All right. No worries, mate. Good, man. Okay. Take care. (laughs) Bye-bye. See ya. All right. That was Mick Verko uh, from Osborne. Mick Verko Guitars. Um, Go and check him out on the... um, uh, on the group, uh, is, there's a heap of builds. Again, just I didn't realise you could do this with uh, with the groups, the Facebook groups. When you find a group, pop the name in, um, 
up the top there in the search bar and all of their pictures uh, and comments and things will actually come up. So uh, go and check his work out. He does some really, really cool stuff. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, we'll be back again very soon with another episode. And uh, if you want to be interviewed, uh, please give me a buzz at birdwood.guitars at gmail.com if you think you've got a story which we would like to hear. Um, please get in contact with me and uh, let me know. All the best, and signing off. Catch you next time. Go and have some fun and build a Starbucks guitar.